Good afternoon. It's March 11th. I haven't walked for a couple of days. I apologize for that. I had good reason. <laughs> but I'm going to make up for it by doing quite a long walk today. I got my sunglasses with me. I don't know if I want to wear them or not. It's hard to even see the screen because of the polarization, I just realized. So maybe I won't wear them. Um, I'm going to make a walk around the lake, which I haven't done for quite a while. Hopefully, I'll get back to doing it every Friday, which has always been my practice up until recently. It seems to me that the zoom is a little odd there. That looks better. Um, right, so why have I not walked in the last couple of days? Well, mainly because uh, of the Kickstarter. That started on Tuesday, the Kickstarter for Shapers of Worlds, Volume 5, the uh, fifth anthology featuring authors who are guests on my podcast, went live on Tuesday. It's a lot of work, Kickstarters, and this one's no exception. So I've been doing lots of publicity for it, and sending out emails and press releases and all sorts of other stuff to uh, get it up and running and uh, start bringing in money. I'm looking for $12,000 Canadian. And off to a good start. Uh, as of the last time I checked, it was at 5400 and something. So 46% I think we've reached. Well, let's go look at the frog since I'm going this way. 46% and just a little over two days, 48 hours for 50, what? 52 and a half hours in. There's the frog, a work of sculpture, college building on beyond it there. At one point, the uh, art department was in this building. So that's why there's some of this artwork around. I'll walk through the grass here to avoid the cars coming out of the parking lot over here for some reason. That's the CBC and the sound stage over there. Beautiful sunny day, as you can see. I'm surprised how many cars are moving around over here. Heading to the lake, which is over here, but there seems to be fencing and stuff between me and there. I'm trying to decide the best way to go. Well, I guess this way's still better. I was thinking I might go that way, but I guess I know there's a path I can pick up over here. <clears throat> so if you would like to uh, check out the Kickstarter, Lots of great authors involved in this anthology again, as always. Lots of great backers' rewards. There's ebooks, and there are ebooks and um, autographed print books and audiobooks and opportunities to chat with authors and uh, critique and mentoring, editing packages, and some artwork. And, all sorts of things. So check out Shapers of Worlds Volume 5. You can find it at tinyurl.com slash Shapers of Worlds numeral 5. tinyurl.com slash Shapers of Worlds numeral 5. Or <clears throat> you can just go to Kickstarter and do a search for Shapers of Worlds Volume 5, which will also take you to it. There's the CBC, back side of it. Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. I used to go there every week to do a science column. For 17 years, I did a weekly science column. And now it's been many years since I did that. It's always weird how the things you think will last forever eventually end. 
when you're a freelancer especially, the gigs come and go. What else did I do today? I did some writing. I've got 90 pages of a new fantasy novel, Rough Draft. I think I'm going to polish those up and submit them to my agent with the uh, synopsis and see what he thinks about hopefully submitting it as is and then not finishing it until I get a contract and hopefully some money to do so. I suspect we'll find lots of people walking around the lake this afternoon. This is an unusual time for me to walk, so we'll see if anybody notices that I'm doing it on YouTube or Facebook. Little Island. There's still ice on the lake, I see that. It has been a long time since I've really walked around the lake, and even a while since I've been down by the lake, but it has not thawed yet, despite the fact it's been well above freezing now for many days. There's still a cap of ice on it. Which kind of surprised me. I thought it might have opened up. The creeks have opened up. I haven't walked along the creek for a little while either, but it's uh, completely thawed. So water is flowing into the lake at one end and out of the lake at the other end, but it's moving underneath the ice cap. I wouldn't suggest walking on the ice cap, mind you. I think uh, this is when the danger thin ice warnings really kick in. There's Willow Island over there. And of course, as I often point out, speaking of books, this is where my fantasy series, Charge of Excalibur, kicks off with, uh, oh, there is open water there. The Lady of the Lake shows up right over there between here and Willow Island and uh, kind of in an underwater chamber and sends a couple of kids on a quest to find the Shards of Excalibur before Merlin can in his modern day guise as Rex Major. And at the end of the books, Excalibur itself ends up in Wascana Lake, just over there. So, you know, now you know. Oh, geese are out. Won't be too long before there'll be goslings. Little baby geese everywhere. Hard to know if these have just flown back or if they've been here all winter. Some geese overwinter. There was a time when there were no geese in Alaskan. Oh, oh, there goes a jerk on a bicycle. You probably didn't hear what he said, that he was a jerk. <laughs> There's Willow Island over there. You can picnic there in the summertime. I've walked over there, but not recently. There's some uh, apartments over there. They may be condos. I'm not sure how they're operated. I think they're rentals. I don't think they're condos. <clears throat> Here's a... <laughs> Who's taking who for a walk there? He's on... Or she, can't tell which. He, I think. Or on uh, roller blades or roller, roller skates being pulled by the dog. The view of... You can see the legislative building over there in the distance. It really is a lovely afternoon. Despite the jerk on the bicycle. <laughs> People on bicycles, hmm, all it takes is a turn the wrong direction or oh, look over there, point off to the left, and if they don't let you know they're there, they're the ones who are going to take the brunt of the, uh, the damage. And uh, he was clearly one of those who would who somehow thought I should know he was coming, even though he didn't ring a bell. Oh, there goes a skateboarder.
figured we'd see lots of dogs this time of day in this weather and sure enough we've seen two so far probably see more i saw one in the hotel as i was leaving there too more bicyclists this is technically a sidewalk here they should be on the road not on the uh, sidewalk which also applies to the earlier jerk he should have been on the road not on the sidewalk this is not actually a multi-use path and like part of the path around them. there's hmcs queen which is actually a landlocked ship it's where the naval cadets hang out and train so it looks like winter in that direction because of the ice but again i wouldn't suggest walking on the ice yes danger and ice for sure Warm enough, people are taking advantage of the benches down by the water. Almost water. Frozen water. It was our first jogger of the day. Probably not the last. Again, I really should do this bingo idea where there are bingo cards and you can say, tell me where in a video you saw certain things and the first person to do so wins a free book. All I have to do is find a way to make the cards. There must be some sort of app that lets you do that. We're going to follow that jogger down that way over the bridge. And another dog. So far, nobody has said hello. I must have startled everyone by live streaming this time of day. <laughs> I don't know what will happen over the weekend. I'm off to Lethbridge tomorrow. Six hour drive, so I doubt I'll do any walking tomorrow. We'll see when I'm in Lethbridge what it looks like. If I have time, I might do a walk there. We'll see. I wouldn't be able to say much about Lethbridge. I've hardly ever been there. Been to their lovely Japanese gardens once, but I don't know if they're even open this time of year, and they wouldn't be particularly lovely if they were. But if they are, I'll uh, try to go there if I have time. There's another jogger. I told you we'd see another one. There's somebody up there enjoying the view. Oh, lots of open water here. So the ice is kind of dwindling, but not quite gone entirely. Lots of open water. Another dog. There'll be a fountain here a little later on, an aeration fountain to keep oxygen in the water. for a look at the lake. My house is right over there in that direction. And there's downtown behind us. This way is the marina. Later in the year, there will, oof, that was unexpected. There will be a, 
canoes and stuff active here. I scan a rowing club based up here. The tent up there is for uh, there's more geese. Uh, Bar Willow, which is a nice restaurant. It has a, the best deck in the city because it has a view of the lake. And they kind of keep it open all year round thanks to that uh, tent. They can heat that. <clears throat> I've never been there in the winter on the deck, though. That's not normally there, that water. That's melt water. I scan that racing canoe club. WRCCpaddle.com if you want to check it out. <clears throat> There's one of the uh, boats that belongs to Ascana Center. There's a good view of the deck, and the bar willow, willow is under that pointy roof there. Nice playground down here. <clears throat> More joggers coming up behind me. I can tell by how quickly that the voices are closing with me. Exercise. I could watch it all day. I don't know. Can we walk down here? On the pier? Might be able to. No, I think it might be too high. Anyway, this is where boats hang out. Canoes and such. Race, uh, especially the dragon boats. Might be down there. That's the uh, Conexus Art Center over there. Over there is Roberts Plaza. Apartment building. Oh, I probably could have gone down there. Oh well. Didn't want to risk it. Looking back up at Bar Willow. I don't think I could get around the corner down there. It's too much water onto the boat ramp. Oh, look! That's the uh, choir I sing with. There's our poster, which I created. Nice to see it in the wild. Radiant Dawn, April 27th, 2024. That's going to be live streamed, if you want to watch it live. And I will certainly post a link to it afterwards. It's an afternoon concert. Yeah, not a heck of a lot of viewers at the moment, but... I still feel like it's all a little wider angle than usual. Shall I zoom in a little bit more? A little bit more. Let's try that. Okay, we go up and over this bridge. This is uh, Broad Street or Moscana Parkway up here. The cars are going by. That'll take you to the university if you go that way. I've walked from here down to the university and back on occasion. It's a while since I've been over on that side. I should do it again soon. Now that the ice is gone. Some gulls. Ducks, geese. There's another cyclist. Now at this point we are on a joint use path. Not just a sidewalk. Over there is Pine Island. There's a waterfall there later on in the year. Again, it's an aeration feature to keep uh, water, uh, air in the water, oxygen in the water. It's always wide open down here earlier than the rest of the lake because the water is flowing in under the Broad Street Bridge up here. So it comes in. See, unlike the previous cyclist, she told me she was passing on the left, whereas he 
muttered something at me for being in his way, rather than even telling me he was there. Did I mention he was a jerk? He was a jerk. Go back and look at him. That was a jerk. Yes, I am petty and vindictive. <laughs> now here's the bridge. So the water flows in here and then flows in that direction until it gets to the Albert Street Bridge and that's where the dam is that makes the lake. Some years, this time of year, it's flooded under here, but not this year. So if you take that path around, you'll end up going by the center of the arts over there, the Nexus Art Center. And then you can walk along the lake over there, all the way to the uh, university, and further, actually. There's usually a lot of birds down here, but not so much yet. There's one on the ice out there. Always puzzles me. You've got open water. Why would you stand on the ice if you were a bird? But then, they are bird brains. Kind of a beach, but you wouldn't swim there. <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're a duck or a goose. So, around to go this way now. Start walking west, mostly. On the south side of the lake. The ledge is always a uh, landmark over there. Or it's about what? Six or seven joggers we've seen. More joggers than dogs. Usually I see more dogs than joggers. Oh, someone said hello, and I can't read it because of the sun. Oh, jolly? Is it jolly? Yes, it is beautiful. Nice and cool for walking, but not so cool as to be chilly. Here's another dog. I still think the joggers have the edge because here comes two more. It's a geese honking over there in Pine Island. I won't go over there today. At some point I will cross the bridge. Not today. Days are getting very long now. I woke up at 6. It was already getting light. It's light till after 8. It wasn't that long ago. It was... Sun was setting about now. Oh, it changes quickly. It's another dog. This bridge takes you over to Pine Island. There's a timing stand over there for canoeing events. It was built for the uh, Canada Summer Games that were held here in 2005, just after they deepened the lake in 2003, which is when a lot of this current infrastructure dates to. This bridge was carefully placed to line up with the uh, legislature building over there, legislative building. Mostly open water down here too, so that ice cap seems to be mostly up at the north end of the lake. sparkly water. Very bright walking this direction, even though I have my sunglasses on. And our house is right down there to the left of that shorter of the two buildings in the distance. 
but I'm not walking back to the house. I'm walking back to the condo where I started from today. For one thing, that's where my car is. Also, that's where supper is. So, two good reasons to go back there. I do walk slower when I'm uh, live streaming than when I'm just walking. Partly that's uh, because of the weight of the gimbal, I guess. And partly it's just I wanted to run out of breath when I'm trying to talk. I don't know. Because my normal walking pace, if I were just walking, would be something more like this. Which I can do with the gimbal, but it does mean I'm a little more out of breath for talking purposes. There's downtown. The gimbal always feels loose these days. Like, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just yet adjusting to my gait. But I don't remember it feeling quite like that when I first got it. Alrighty. This little bit of a hill. Oh, I don't know what he's after. Didn't have a siren going. He had his lights on. These will all bud out in the next month or so. And there will be uh, leaves and flowers. There's another jogger. Walks kind of rehab over there. I've walked, I walked over there during the winter. I haven't been over there for a while. The dog at the head of us. Another view of downtown through the trees. Probably halfway in a bit by now. When we uh, angle up here to the right, that's definitely the turnaround and heading back point. Doing it this way. Well, didn't warn me, but at least didn't snark at me either when they went by. I know how it is when you're on a bicycle. You think somehow that everybody knows you're coming, but a pedestrian doesn't. You're moving much faster than by the time they register the sound of your tires on the road, you're on top of them. So you have to be considerate. What is that, jogger number 10 or 12? You have to be considerate on a multi-use pathway as a bicyclist, and too many of them aren't. Yes, that is my rant du jour. The irresponsibility of some cyclists. You just joined me. There was a jerk on a bike earlier on in this walk. Sometimes I walk down there. Not today. A lot of picnic areas over here on the left. It looks like ice over on this side. That island over there is Spruce Island, it's called. Undeveloped. There is a landing stage, but it's not someplace you can go and have picnics or anything like that. It's intended mostly as a wildlife habitat. Specifically birds. We have a lot of other wildlife, muskrats maybe. On the mammal side, there might be. Certainly squirrels, if they can get over there. I don't know how swimmy squirrels are. Yet another jogger. Back that way, a little different perspective. East over here. Some of the picnic areas I was talking about. There's also a totem pole over there. 
which I won't go by today, but have in the past, but I will go by it, but I won't go look at it. Two dogs for the price of one. Totem pole's right over there. You can see it through the trees. I'll like to take a closer look at it again sometime. I have in the past. Look at downtown over the ice cap. <laughs> Not the Arctic ice cap, but the cap of ice here on the lake still. 11 days into April. Because that's what happens in Saskatchewan. You have ice on the water for more months than you don't. I knew we'd see lots of people this time of day. It's after five now. People are off work. Another statue over there. There's a few memorials of various sorts in the park. Okay, the next building of note will be the legislative building. Maybe I'll uh, go by the tennis courts here on this walk. It's a bit of a shortcut. It cuts off a, a loop of the shoreline. There's a water spout down there that has water spouting. <laughs> later on in the spring and summer. Two more dogs. Oh look, and there's a poster for Beauty and the Beast that I'll be playing more recent at the end of May, May 24th to 26th. Would you be around? Come see me. Maurice is Belle's father, if you don't know the show. The crazy old Inventor coot guy. There's a line in there where I say, Belle, I'm old. I've lived my life. And when we did the first read through, I changed it to Belle. I'm middle aged. I've lived my life. She's got a big laugh. Second time I've been in Beauty and the Beast, I did it at uh, Persephone Theater in Saskatoon back in winter of 2006, 2007, or 2007, 2008. I guess it was 2007, 2008, December 2007. It ended actually at the end of December. So we didn't uh, hold over into January. So, and uh, that one I played a bunch of different parts. My only real named part was Monsieur Dark, the insane asylum keeper. It was the first show in uh, Persephone Theater's new theater in Saskatoon, the Rimay Arts Center. It's now a big art gallery there that wasn't there before. But uh, we were the first show, and it was cool. There's a picture of us in dust masks, so it looks like a COVID thing. This is the Holodomor Memorial to the Russian Genocide of Ukrainians under Stalin. We have a large Ukrainian population in Saskatchewan. Um, yeah, so the reason we had dust masks, so it had nothing to do with pandemics, it was... Uh, we moved into the theater while it was still under construction. They just barely had it in shape for the opening night audience. Our dressing rooms were not finished at all. They were just roughed out. We had plumbing at least, but not much else. Mirrors. And uh, so we were rehearsing in this cloud of concrete dust. And one of our uh, performers was a fellow from a little town called Rolo. His name is uh, Paul Alexander Nolan. And he's now a major Broadway star, in fact, He's been in numerous Broadway shows, and he's currently uh, starring in Like Water for Elephants, which is kind of the hottest thing on Broadway right now. So it'll be, oh look, it's the same jerk on the bicycle. That move might be easier. It's the second lap around being a jerk. <clears throat> I 
wondered if he'd come back around again. Sure enough, he did. Uh, Paul Alexander Nolan is he was just a small town Saskatchewan guy, but he got into uh, musical theater. I was in some shows with him when he was a teenager. He went off and almost quit at one point. I remember talking to him and he was saying, I thought he was going to hang it up and become a forest firefighter of all things. But then he got hired at Stratford and from Stratford he went with a production of Jesus Christ Superstar that ended up on Broadway and he's been performing on Broadway ever since. He's had lead roles in a number of shows and uh, this seems to be his biggest hit that he's been in. So be excited to see if he might win an Oscar, uh, not an Oscar, a Tony. You never know. At least be nominated for one. Anyway, he was our beast. That's what that long-winded story was about. And the concrete really played havoc with his voice. He actually lost his voice for a few performances because of the concrete dust, and so did uh, someone else. So generally speaking, I don't know if they're miking now, but at the time we didn't mic as a rule of thumb for Persephone shows. And uh, but he had to be mic'd because his voice was soft. And another performer actually sang his big solo because of that. So he was very worried. He was worried he'd permanently damaged his voice. But obviously he didn't. He has a wonderful voice. And if you go on to YouTube, you can find performances by him. And currently, as I said, in like Water for Elephants. But others from other shows he's been in. This is an amateur production this time, of course, for General Electric Musical Theater. There's two of us who are equity members. Myself and Marianne Woods, who's been in two professional productions of Beauty and the Beast, playing Mrs. Potts, but <laughs> this time uh, she's not Mrs. Potts. And I'm playing Maurice because, as I've said previously, somehow I've ended up playing old guys. I don't know how that happened. I don't think of myself as an old guy, but apparently directors do. I said, you know, with the right makeup, I could have played the Beast, but no, they went with some young guy. Age discrimination, if you ask me. Here's the legislative building, of course. <clears throat> the main entrance is over there. We'll go through the ornamental gardens, which are neither gardens nor ornamental at the moment, having nothing growing in them. Is that a permanent thing now? There's a cop car sitting in front of the ledge. Are they security or? At least they've gotten rid of the uh, concrete barriers they had for a while. You can drive right up to the front now, which you weren't able to do for a while. This will take us by the statue of Queen Elizabeth. Let's ride her famous, fam favorite horse, one of her favorite horses, which was born here in Saskatchewan. So that's why there's a statue of her on it. And uh, she dedicated it herself in 2005. It was pouring rain, but I was right over here with my daughter, who was three at the time. And my daughter gave her flowers so I have a great close-up picture of the queen and a great close-up picture of my daughter with the flowers, which are in this, you can see the flowers in the picture of the queen, so you can tell it's, you know, connected. But I wasn't able to get a picture of both of them together because, of course, it was too close. And that was uh, pre-iPhone days, too. That was just a, an old digital camera we had. Still, that was the last photo. There she is, Queen Elizabeth. It was very nice. She came along here. We were standing right over here somewhere. And uh, she actually went by us. And, you know, oh, no, Alice still had her flowers. But then either someone pointed it out or she turned around and noticed that there was a little girl with flowers. And she came back. She reversed her flow and came back and took the flowers from Alice. So it was a very lovely moment. 
And the photos ended up on the front page of the Weyburn Review, my old newspaper I used to edit. My mom was still alive and living in Weyburn, so it had a real strong Weyburn connection. Last photo I ever had in the Weyburn Review, after having multiple photos a week, of course, all the time I worked there in the 80s. <clears throat> oh, let's turn around and show you the front of the ledge now. Saskatchewan Legislative Building, there you go, with the queen on her horse in front of it. I've told all these stories many times, but it's been a long time since I walked this way, so they should be fresh to you, <laughs> unless you've been taking really detailed notes over the years. You can see these trees are shaped. They don't normally grow with flat tops in this <laughs> province. And eventually, there'll be beautiful flowers here. Another, uh, what is it? Probably two months before they start to really look like anything. Okay, I'm headed straight across the lake, but I can't, even though there's a bit of ice. I have to go around the end. All right, we'll walk around the west end of the lake now. I was talking about Broadway. Here we are with a west end performance <laughs> by yours truly. I've often appeared on the west end of Wascana Lake. <laughs> Not unfortunately, the west end of London. Yes, very, very thin. I wouldn't even try to get the ice from here. Albert Street Bridge, and of course the dam in the middle of it is what forms the lake, as I said when we were at the intake over there, Broad Street. Gull. Land gulls, obviously, not seagulls. I don't know uh, if they're a different species, or just happens to be where they live. Here's a goose slowly making his way across. Probably hiss at me. Oh, no, he decided not to. <laughs> Perhaps they're more hissy when they have goslings around, which won't be long, as I said. Again, if you've got water and you're a goose, why would you sit on the ice? Nevertheless, there they are on the ice. The dam is right up here. It's a very long bridge, but the dam is actually not that wide at all. The water looks very odd from this direction because it's all dark. The ice is dark, whereas when we approached it from the south, it was light colored. Now it looks like some sort of black tar instead of ice. But it is ice, I assure you. Take a look at the dam. There might be quite a bit of water flowing out through it when we get up here. We're headed right over there. There we got a, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that was that that kid was on. So here's the dam. If I was up on the bridge, you'd be able to see the water pouring through it. But you can see the white water on the other side. So the creek could be quite high over there. Next time I walk along yet, it should be quite high. That won't be until next week, though. Now we will go this way. Here's the sinkhole that opened up last year. I presume this year they'll do something to fill it. Probably had the budget for it. It also ate somebody's backyard over on the other side of the ridge.